This is the plaintiff, Angelique Patton. She says she hired the defendant, her cousin, to file some important paperwork for her business. And she made so many mistakes it wasted her time and money. Family or no family, she won't be taken advantage of. And is suing for the $436.44 she's owed. This is the defendant, Kathy Ben Bella. She says she's a paralegal, and her cousin could never get her act together, and the paperwork was delayed because of her incompetence. She worked hard for the money she was paid and isn't giving her cousin any of it back. She's accused of taking too long. All parties, please use your right hand. The Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Ms. Patton, how are you? Hey, I'm wonderful. Hola, Oeza Milian. You, you run a nonprofit called 93rd Back to Basics. What is it that that organization does? We are a community resource education center. We deal with clients who are, come from impoverished areas. Uh, we work with them with their GED tutoring in the math and science, because in our neighborhoods, urban neighborhoods, they lack what it is to get into a college. We also have uh, classes in etiquette, coping skills, uh, building wealth, how to be self-sufficient and how to maintain self-sufficiency. We also have a grief counseling because we have people in our neighborhoods and young adults and they're dying in droves. So yes, that's what we do. Have, but you were looking for 501c3 status, which means that you would be tax exempt. So how long have you been up and running without having that 501c3 status? Uh, as you may know, Ju uh, Judge Milian, before you can even attempt to present yourself for the 501c3, you need to start investing into the community all on your own. So for the past four and a half years, I have been very passionate about what I do. I have been entrusted with the most valuable thing, which is life, the lives. And you can't put a price on that. Um, I take it very serious because I too changed my life. I know exactly what it takes to get them going. And um, so in, since 2016, I have been volunteering. I have been putting through the paperwork. I went through a divorce myself, but that did not stop me. I kept going. I was told that I couldn't, but I kept going. And so I am here today and I work okay. hard to get that going. Okay, so you hired Ms. Ben Bella is your cousin, correct? Yes, yeah, she's my second cousin. And you hired her to put together the paperwork for the tax exempt status. And Ms. Ben Bella, what qualifies you to do that? Have you done that before? Do you have your own nonprofit? Uh, Judge Melian, I, yes, I, first of all, I do have my own nonprofit called the Women of Royalty Outreach Ministries, and it has been in effect for over 20 years. I've had my 501c3 for since 2006, and I have in the community uh, several churches and every, other entities prepared and completed the 501c process, and they are now up and running. Okay, so Ms. Patton, you agree to pay Ms. Ben Bella $1,500 to get the paperwork together. And you give her the $1,500 when? Uh, June of 2020, correct? Yes. And um, is there any understanding between the two of you uh, of uh, when the work would be done, how long it would take? Well, initially, she did not say anything about how long it would take. Um, I kind of figured that it may take anywhere between 60 days. I was in the process of purchasing a home, so I wasn't exceptionally eager to have the entire process completed. So we never did tie that down, except when okay. July 14th came, that's when she shot me an email and told me, um, I usually have a 90 day turnaround. She was very evasive. She was um, almost as a matter of fact, because I had called her about my state certification, which um, that was in July. She had had it almost a month and my state certification had not been submitted yet, but if I may elaborate on my state certification, she registered me, but she did it inaccurately. She has my son as the business owner, which is inaccurate because I have an attorney that I had look it over. She, I am not the owner. My, my children are the owner. All right, Ms. Ben Bella, talk to me. She says that, um, you know, you didn't do what you needed to do. And at some point it, it appears like you acknowledge that because you returned the majority of the money to her. So what was going on with you during this time? Yes that you weren't able to complete it. It is not a quick process. And I shared with Miss 
patent that I also had some extenuating circumstances, which my dad had just had an amputation on the 8th. Uh, Miss Patton hired me on I'm a so Sunday sorry. on the 14th. Yes. And my father's 86 yeah. years old. I am his primary caregiver to keep him in his home. And I strive and I share with Miss uh, Patton that nothing came before that, as I explained to all my uh, clients. And so what took place was I did do the initial. I have many emails with we were going back and forth because it's not a little work. If people think you can do this in a few minutes, it takes a lot of time to get it right. Because once we submit it, if it is rejected, you don't get your money back. You have to start all over. But most people don't understand the intricacies that it takes. So there are plenty of emails where I said, I need this information. Give me that. And I have that work product, the research. However, as things happened, uh, October 6th, which was almost the deadline, I did call Ms. Patton and say, listen, I can either refund your money or get a, you can give me an extension due to my dad having countless, and when I say countless, I mean from one medical emergency uh, to another, and which was, was, again, my primary obligation. And she said, yes, no problem, cuz. And so I said, uh, 45 days. Uh, I reached out to her one week later. I emailed her because I was in Cleveland Clinic Toxic, Toxic Cancer Center. So then right after I had visited my own physician, I knew after much travail at four o'clock in the morning, I sent Miss Patty an email on the 13th. I, I, anguished over having to say, hey, I, I've seen she's done some amazing things. I know what have I done to build my life and change it around. It, I was excited when she came to me. OK. And again, the okay, email but, showed okay, that but can I you, much. Can fo let's, let's focus. You, what you tell her, you, okay, you, you so, decided that so. there was just too much going on in no your way life. No way I could meet the deadline. You had your own health. I told her in the email. And, and then after my dad's in a mind compounded, I went ahead and refunded Thirteen hundred okay. and twenty-five dollars of the fifteen hundred. Okay. Was there a packet or anything that you conveyed to Miss Patton, or there was really nothing? Is there anything concrete that you were able to say? Here's your file, so someone else can complete it, or it's not that kind of thing. No, we didn't even get to that part. I said, "Here's your money." All right. So what ended up happening, Miss Patton? Did you end up hiring someone else? Yes, Your Honor, I did. I uh, actually spoke with and my. And what attorney. did you have to pay them? I had to give them $1,400. So now I am waiting on my approval. Overall, I gave Ms. Bimbella $1,625. When Ms. Bimbella forwarded me the fifteen, the thirteen twenty-five, she had she gave me back through Cash App. Cash App takes a fee. So that fee came up off of it. Okay. So basically what's happened here is I have two women, both of whom do a great deal for their communities, and both of whom are living lives that are lives of service to others. That's what I have. Correct. Um, but I still have a contract that I have to decide. It's not a matter of who's doing this longer or who's doing this better or who's doing more of God's work while they're doing it. It's just a matter of I got to look at what the agreement was, see if the agreement was followed and determine how much, if anything, is still due. Now, um, you are suing for several things. You want the $300 balance paid to you, but you also are suing yes. for the cash app fee. And here's what I'm not understanding. Yes. You were going to enter when she said, oh, cash app has a fee. What, what is it you were going to say? Because I don't use a cash app. I use Venmo and Zelle. How, how does cash app work? Ms. Ben Bella. Okay. There are two options with cash app. You can take it instantly. Ms. Patton selected the option to get it instantly. Instantly, rather than waiting for it to post. Yeah. yeah. For it to deposit. Yeah, that's so accurate. That's where that you, you, came yeah, from. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And now the attorney's fees that you're suing for are $150. But I, I've looked through all of the pieces of evidence that you submitted. And I don't see anybody's bill for $150. Did I miss it? My attorney did not hand me that bill as of yet. He just called me this morning and told me that he had my bill ready because he's on a $3,000 retainer. So... But nonetheless, with yeah, but I, I can't. I, yeah, I can't just make up one hundred and fifty dollars. You can, you're, you you choose when to go to court, and you chose to go to court. And a big part of your lawsuit are attorneys' fees, and you don't have any evidence of one hundred and fifty dollars attorneys' fees that was, should be charged to her. 
Um, cause you're not going to get okay. it then. Uh, you know, it's like, you can't just okay. tell me that. Uh, so no on the attorney's fees, but, no uh, on the cash app. Just... The real thing that I've got to, det- no, the real thing that I've got to determine is okay. whether the $300, whether any part of the $300 was earned or not earned. And, um, you know, Ms. Bimbella, I appreciate that, um, you have insight into your own difficulties and whatever, and that you understood and, sua sponte on your own without being without people demanding and having to sue you for the 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 1500 you said you know what i've got to give you back some i just i can't do this i got too much going on and that's very laudable because i don't see that very often in court but i still have to decide whether or not anything you did was worth the 300 dollars that you decided to keep to her okay more importantly you know how do we place a value on the delay that happened for all that time when you weren't able to do what you were supposed to do. So I, I'm going to find that you owe her the $300, and I'm going to find in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of the $300. I wish you both um, a lot of luck, and um, I appreciate on behalf of everyone in your community everything that the two of you ladies do. Your angels. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Benbella, how do you feel about the decision? She found against you. Well, you know what? It, things happen in life. Um, uh, I, I do still love my cousin. I have supported her and uh, we live in the same community. We have some of the same challenges. So I, I bid her great and blessings throughout uh, her new endeavors. And I'll be there to support her. Well, good for you. Very, very nice. Ms. Patton, what do you have to say to that? Oh, wow. Uh, things do happen. But nonetheless, I am passionate about what it is that I attend to address with my community. We have people dying in droves, and my pro- particular programs can definitely assist people in a major way. Yes, I still love her because she is my relative, but nonetheless, the bigger picture is far greater than this. I wish her the best in her endeavors as well, but I got to continue. I need to continue to move forward with vigor because the people out there are depending on me, and I know it. All right. Well, very good. Well, you're going to get the $300 back according to the judge. Thank you. And she compliments you both very much so. Thank you very much. All right, well, let's join the judges now for another session of After the Verdict. I'm guessing, you didn't say it this way, but I'm guessing what you were thinking was the $300 retainer really should have got swallowed up by all the additional That's really time, it. I mean, you trouble, know, I, I know that she did stuff. some work, but if the work you right. do doesn't have a whole lot of value right. to me, then why do I have to pay it? If, right. if the work you do has sl- the way, and the way you did it slowed me down and right. made me lose four months of my uh, journey, that's kind of, you know. But pretty inspirational when you have people who are this committed to, to making their communities a better place and certainly opening up a 501c3 Uh, tax-exempt charitable organization like this, it's commendable, right? So uh, John asks, hey Harvey, uh, can a commercial tenant stop paying rent if the government closes that type of business due to COVID? I wish there were an easy answer to that. And this is one of the big problems with this virus that the government has not in many cases really offered clear guidance on this. If there is a law in your city or state that says that you can stop paying rent, the answer would be yes. If it doesn't say that, although it's not clear because judges could go either way, I think the problem there is that you may have to keep paying.